Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have to say, I'm enjoying all of this room I have up here on the pulpit now. <laughs> this is kind of nice, not having that laptop up here. Our first reading this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, and he is doing today. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. 17 verses 11 through 19, Jesus cleanses 10 lepers. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except 
this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For me, pandemic or not, Thanksgiving was going to be different. I spent Thanksgiving last year in a place that I never thought I would, but I thoroughly enjoyed it at the Denny's, just off of I-5 south of Eugene. It was just me and my dad sharing a turkey dinner that I will give Denny's credit was actually pretty good. We laughed. We both chuckled about how it was that we found ourselves at Denny's, of all places, on Thanksgiving Day. But it was a good Thanksgiving it was a different one. It was a strange one. It was unlike every Thanksgiving I had had before that. It wasn't too long before that that I was preparing Thanksgiving meal on my own with just me and the kids for the first time. That was also an unexpected Thanksgiving. And yet filled with joy in the midst of life's unexpectedness. I keep waiting for a normal Thanksgiving. I'm not sure there ever will be a normal Thanksgiving, though. You see, it seems like every year it's different. I can look back at Thanksgivings and remember the ones with my grandparents there. And they are no longer there. And now I'll have a Thanksgiving without my dad. And so many of us are being forced into this Thanksgiving because of the pandemic. Great changes and terrible ones separated from families and loved ones in ways that we would much rather not be. Now, thankfully, these are extraordinary times. It will get better. God, please let it get better. I can imagine life was horrible for the ten lepers. For them, they had lost everything because of a disease. And you see, leprosy in biblical times had a wide uh, definition. <laughs> Any kind of physical skin ailment Terrible acne would get you branded as a leper. And for a leper, you were unclean. And that meant that you couldn't be in physical contact with someone else because then they became unclean. It wasn't just about infectious disease. 
It was about spiritual cleanliness and the ability to present yourself before God. And these ten lepers were unclean on the outside and the inside. They were shunned. They were pushed to the outside of society. They had lost everything. I cannot begin to imagine that life. And here they meet Jesus, and they cry out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And just because they cried out to him, he sends them on their way, and they are healed. And out of the ten, only one comes back to say thank you. All ten were healed, but only one stopped to thank the healer. Now see, the amazing thing for me is that it was a Samaritan. It was a man who, quite frankly, would not have liked a Jewish rabbi. And a Jewish rabbi would not have liked a Samaritan. This goes back to the same experience Jesus has with the Samaritan woman at the well. It was inappropriate. It was taboo for them to even be talking to each other. They were rival groups. And yet it was this foreigner who came back and threw himself at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. Of course, it's easy in some ways for us to imagine a leper giving thanks for having themselves cleaned and healed and made whole. That is a life-changing event. They are able to go back to their families. They are able to go back to their lives. It's a whole fresh start again. For that leper, he had every reason to give thanks. And it was easy to find the reason to give thanks. I think for us, there are times it's hard to find the reasons to give thanks. Do you ever struggle with that? I know I do. Certainly this time of social isolation is a time that I struggle to give thanks. It's so easy to focus on the things that have been taken away. I look out this morning and I see the empty pews and the seats. I know who sits there and they're not here this morning. And it's heartbreaking. We all have losses because of this pandemic in our lives. We have to wear those masks. It gets old. Shopping is not what it used to be. I never really enjoyed that anyway. We can't even go to a simple restaurant and go out to eat now. The losses are all around us, and yet, and yet there is so much to be thankful for. In many ways, in times like this, we have to go on a hunt. We have to look for, we have to concentrate, we have to search for things to be thankful for. 
But I tell you what, when we start counting our blessings, when we start lining them up and looking at all of the things that we have going for us, It's a lot longer list than we think. I was reading a book recently by a uh, neurological sur surgeon, Dr. Uh, Gawande, on uh, being mortal. And he talks about death and dying and what happens and what happens in the natural process uh, of um, uh, of the body in aging and in dying. And he talks about gratitude. And he talks about the attitude of gratitude and how having gratitude for the blessings that we do have changes things. In fact, he said and has said to many of his patients, and he writes in his book, if you are breathing in oxygen and blowing out carbon dioxide, you have more going for you than you think. Because that means a whole lot of other things are happening in your body. What other blessings do we have I want to challenge you this week, and I'm going to do this too. I want you to find as many blessings as you can each day. And if you're not already doing it at each meal, every time you eat, give thanks. Take that time each meal, before you eat, during, after, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a formal bow your head, close your eyes prayer. It can simply be a conversation with God. You can even talk to God with your mouth full. He won't mind. But take time at each mealtime and give thanks to God. Go looking for things. Make it a scavenger hunt of your life. looking for the things to be thankful for. And if it is simply all that you can think of that I can chew and swallow my food without choking, that is a huge blessing. That I can stand up from the table and go walk into the kitchen, that is a huge blessing. So that's our challenge this Thanksgiving. The challenge this week, this month, this year, really for the rest of our lives, is to live in gratitude for each and every blessing we have. This is exactly what Moses is doing as he's standing on the edge of the promised land. He is reminding God's people that God has blessed you and give thanks today tomorrow and always. I want to tell you about one of my favorite hymns, and we're going to sing it in just a moment. It's on the back of your insert, our closing hymn. It's now thank we all our God. I hope you have heard these words. These are... Um, quite popular at this time of year. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices. 
who from our mother's arms has blessed, blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. They're beautiful words. And friends, these words were born out of some of the greatest suffering and death that we can even begin to imagine. They were written by German pastor Martin Reinhardt. Martin Reinhardt lived in Eilenburg, Germany during the Thirty Years' War, and the city of Eilenburg in 1637 was in the middle of the Thirty Years' War where they had been overrun by the Swedes and the Austrians and then overrun again by the Swedes. And inside this walled city, the conditions were horrible. There was hunger, and plague was running rampant. In 1637, Martin Reinhardt conducted over 5,000 funerals. And one of them was his wife. And he writes, All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven. He writes a song of thanksgiving. In the midst of great suffering, because He knows that there is still much to give thanks for. And so let us, in this season of difficulty, make giving thanks a way of living. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin. This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day, and that He appeared first to the women, then to Peter and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Dear friends, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for all of us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us today, tomorrow, and always. And all God's people said, Amen.